I've made a video game. This is not it. This is Adventure Capitalist, an idle game in which you do absolutely nothing for most of the time. This is more visually interesting than the game that I've made, which wouldn't have made for a very compelling opening to a video. So, let's talk game design. Is it possible to make a game about nothing? Yes. Here it is. This is nothing happening the entire time. Ah, but Zane, I hear you cry. This isn't a game. You're not doing anything. Games need gameplay. You're right. You caught me. Games, as a general rule, feature gameplay. Gameplay is a kind of nebulous term that tends to be broadly defined depending on who you're talking to. It's also a word that doesn't make much sense if you think about it for long enough. It's like saying book read or movie watch. It's a weird made up word that doesn't have a definition anyone can agree on. The general consensus is that gameplay is things that you do. The act of interacting with the systems and mechanics that the designer and developer have laid out for you. So we need a way to inspire gameplay. And what's the easiest way of achieving that? Points. Anything with points in must be a game. Golf has points and that's the most boring sport on earth. So there, now we have points. And since the aim of the game is nothing, the more nothing that you do, the higher your points go. Congratulations, you can now win at doing nothing. Ah, but Zane, I hear you cry again. How do you lose? Most real games have a fail state. You're right, you caught me again. A fail state is a state in which you fail. Traditionally, this is death in the game, I mean. If you die in real life while playing a game, then you've probably found the ultimate fail state. Teachable moment, try not to actually kill your players in real life. This sounds obvious, but you'd be amazed at how many games have shipped lately with the ability to give their players seizures so that they collapse and brain themselves on a coffee table. It's a weird gimmick to have, but whatever shifts units, I suppose. Okay, so you'll lose by doing anything other than nothing, which means if your mouse moves or if you press a key on the keyboard, you lose. You'll get a game over, and you will have failed at doing nothing. Slide in a bit of negative reinforcement there, just to encourage the player to get better at the game. But we're still not done. You might have heard of the game design concept of juice, where the game will respond with tactile and pleasing feedback based on what you do. It's something that is generally accepted to be a positive addition to any game as long as it's handled correctly. We want absolutely none of that. The problem we've got now is that the solid background colour we've got here is too exciting and stimulating. There might be way too much stuff going on in the background that we just can't see. For all we know, this could be a thrilling animated cutscene of a white kitten in a snowstorm with its eyes closed. No, we can't have that. We need something that's much more nothing. We need the least stimulating scene we can possibly create. And so, boom, beige. Bleak, bland, boring beige. Just beige from top to bottom. Nothing exciting has ever happened when beige was involved. There is now absolutely no danger of anything interesting at all, which is brilliant. It really accentuates the nothing. And while we're fixing things for being too stimulating, let's sort out that font. Arial? Oh no, that's way too exciting. Let's get a nice, dull Times New Roman going instead. There is still something we need to address though, an often overlooked aspect of game design. Sound and music. This game about nothing has the perfect sound effects and musical accompaniment for what we're trying to do, i.e. it has none. What this means is it has no distractions and if you think about it you can't automatically lose. Because if you think about it, if you were listening to music you're no longer doing nothing are you? Because listening to music is something and we're trying to not do something. That is sort of the point, please pay attention. What we've managed to create here, believe it or not, is one of the most important and morally poignant games ever made. Oh you thought The Last of Us 2 dealt with themes of loss and sacrifice and whatever in a deep, mature way. The Last of Us 2 is basically the hungry caterpillar compared to this. You might have heard over the years that various games have caused moral panic and outrage in the mainstream press. Games like Doom, Mortal Kombat, Manhunt and Grand Theft Auto that have, according to your friend's mom that nobody likes who only orders plain cheese pizzas for sleepovers, corrupted the minds of our nation's innocent impressionable youth. I'm here to tell you that the game that we've just designed is more fundamentally evil and morally bankrupt than any of those. Oh, you don't believe me? Okay, there's a quote you might have heard of that goes something like this. All it takes for evil to succeed is for good men to do nothing. And here, our game about doing nothing is just that. It is, therefore, the most evil game ever made. Paradoxically, it's also one of the most beneficial games ever made. You might be familiar with the proven health benefits of meditation and mindfulness, and a big part of practicing that is being able to clear your mind and settle your thoughts. Now, I'm no Buddhist master on top of a mountain or anything, but I'd imagine there's nothing more mind cleansing than well, nothing. Stare into this for a while and maybe it'll help you clear your thoughts to the point that you'll start feeling better, 
karma and at peace. And because it causes peace, probably, it might be incredibly helpful in soothing worldwide tensions in conflicts and war. I imagine you could most likely show this to all the dudes being like, ah, I'm gonna bomb you, and eventually they'll be like, oh actually, maybe not though. And thus, world peace is achieved. By making this game, I'm pretty sure I'm eligible for the Nobel Peace Prize, which is nice. If you'd like to play it for yourself and experience the duality of this deep and important interactive experience, the link is in the description. Don't forget to like this video if you liked this video, subscribe for more videos like this video, and be sure to check the date this video was uploaded, just so that you understand why it exists at all. And I'll see you the next time I'm thinking, hey, let's talk game design. You know, it's just occurred to me that this game would have been a really good opportunity for a jump scare, maybe next year.